on stage. Uh, they pick him up in round one. He's going to fit really nicely into that jailbreak defense they got. Go get that quarterback, and that's all they're going to have to ask him to do as a rookie. Round three, they come back and get Duke Riley with their second pick in the draft, the linebacker out of LSU. Solid linebacker. Uh, will fit really nicely in that system. They go guard, corner, running back, tight end, kind of get a little bit of everything. You can kind of see special teams out of these guys. Um, And honestly, the Falcons, grade-wise, you know, if you have to give them a grade, probably did the worst out of the division, but you'd still give them a C plus, B minus. So that would be Saints 1, Panthers 2, Bucks 3, Falcons 4, and the NFC South as I see it. Moving on to the East, the big old East, Uh, starting with the Cowboys. The Cowboys had a good draft. You could see where their scouts focused their attention during this year. Uh, Two players from Michigan, two players from the University of Colorado. Uh, Let's see, one, two, two players from the ACC, another player from Florida, Ohio State. Round one, they pick up the big defensive end out of Michigan in Taco Charlton. Uh, he's going to have to get a little stronger on the NFL level, but a good pickup for the Cowboys there is they have no pass rush. I love their second-round pick in Chidobe Awuzie, uh, the cornerback out of Colorado. This is a guy I really liked in this draft. They come back in round three, horrible secondary there in Dallas. You know their defense is pitiful. You know their offense did last year. Round three, they pick up the cornerback from Michigan, Jordan Lewis. He can be beat, but he's a solid player. Let's coach him up a little bit. Uh, I love their fourth round pick also, Ryan Schweitzer, the wide receiver out of UNC. He's very much like Billingsley, so we'll have to see how they decide to use him or which who makes the squad or, you know, are they both going to be used in some kind of different packages. Scott Linehan's not the most creative guy, so we'll have to see really what goes on there. Then they have two sixth round picks, uh, Xavier Woods, a safety out of Louisiana Tech, and Marcus White cornerback out of Florida State. I like the Marquez White pick. Um, Florida State defensive players tend to do pretty well in the NFL. Three seventh-round picks, Joey Ivey, defensive tackle out of Florida. He's going to be a rotational guy. Uh, Noah Brown, wide receiver out of Ohio State. We'll see if he makes the squad. And Jordan Correll, defensive tackle out of Colorado, their final pick, most likely a rotational guy for them as well. I'd give the Cowboys a B, B plus on their draft. I think they did really well with the players they picked. They got quality in each round. Um, Pretty impressive. (laughs) Moving on to the Giants. Round one, they pick up the pass-catching tight end, Evan Egram, out of Mississippi State. Uh, He's really more of a bigger receiver than a tight end. You're not going to really see him doing too much blocking, although he is a physical player, and I like that about him coming into this draft. The Giants needed help at the tight end position and definitely an end zone threat and a middle of the field threat for them with uh, Eli Manning there and the receivers they have. So that that that'll definitely help those guys on the outside in Shepard and uh, Brandon Marshall and, of course, Beckham. Round two, they get Dalvin Thompson, the defensive tackle out of Alabama. Nice rotational player. He's not going to take over for Hankins. He's not going to completely fill that void. But he will help. Round three, Davis Webb falls to him. Eli's getting, you know, he's 10, 11, 12 years in the league now. Got to start developing somebody. Davis Webb falls to three. You pretty much have to take him at that point because that's a a good spot to take your future potential starting quarterback. Round four, Wayne Gallman, the running back out of Clemson. Not too impressed with the rest of the Giants draft after, I mean, Galman, okay, we'll see what he does. They definitely need a running back. He could turn out to be a good NFL prospect. Um, we'll, we'll just have to see. Then they get Avery Moss, a defensive end out of Youngtown State. And their final pick in round six, Adam Benz Nawadi, the tackle out of Pitt, who I actually like. Um, more than their fourth or fifth round picks, honestly. So I'd give the Giants a C-plus on their draft. The Eagles, um, they took some risks. They had some guys fall to them. I like their first round pick, Derek Barnett. It's a little ironic. He breaks Reggie White's sack record at Tennessee and ends up playing with the same NFL team as he did after Reggie White came over from the USFL. 
Um, round two, they take the injured Sidney Jones cornerback out of Washington. Easily would have been a top ten pick, I believe, had he not hurt his Achilles during his pro day. So good pick up there. Sounds like he might be ready for the beginning of the season. Round three, uh, Razul Douglas, cornerback out of West Virginia. Um, you might see him play a little more safety than corner. We'll have to see. He's a bigger guy. Uh, round four, they had two picks. Mac Hollins, wide receiver out of UNC, and Donnell Pumphrey, running back out of San Diego State, who uh, does have the career rushing record now. He's kind of a smaller version of what they have there in Ryan Matthews, but um, good running back. He had did take a beating with all the touches he had in college, but I, you know, he he could step right in and help Ryan Matthews on both special teams and in the backfield because they're very similar players. Um, and you, you know, they might have him put on some weight too. Round five, two picks, Sheldon Gibson, wide receiver out of West Virginia, and Nathan Gary, the safety out of Nebraska. Nothing special, maybe contribute on special teams. You might see him on the practice squad. And then round six, Elijah Qualls, defensive tackle out of Washington. Probably a rotational guy for him as they didn't have a lot of depth there on the defensive line last year in Philadelphia. Overall, you give them about a C on their draft. Washington, bringing up the rear of the NFC East, the last year. Um, God, Jonathan Allen, Ryan Anderson, right off the bat, two Alabama guys in rounds one and two. Solid pickups on the defensive side of the ball there for Washington as Allen plays defensive end and Anderson at linebacker. Then they get the cornerback who, if he wasn't injured, definitely would not have fallen to round three in Fabian Moreau out of UCLA. They get uh, a running back who had more yards than Joe Mixon and is actually the Oklahoma rushing leader in Samarji P. Ryan uh, in round four. Monte Nicholson, the safety out of Michigan State in round four. Then in round five, they pick up a tight end out of Arkansas, a blocking tight end, and Jeremy Sprinkle, because, you know, they already got Reed as their passing tight end. Two round six and two round seven picks. They go center out of Wyoming and Chase Rollier, Robert Davis, wide receiver out of Georgia State, safety out of Clemson, Josh Harvey, and defensive back out of Auburn, Auburn, Joshua Hosley. So rotational guys, special teams guys. You give Washington a B there. So... Ranking the NFC East drafts, I would go Cowboys, Giants, Washington second, and the Eagles coming in in third place there. NFC West, last division we have to talk about for this review show. And again, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you hear something that you disagree with or you hear something you agree with, get at me. Let me know. We'll debate it. I'll have you on the show. We'll debate it live. If you want to speak your mind, please, by all means, come speak your mind. I gave you the ways to get at me on the show. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it going. It's sports. It's all love. All right, NFC West, 49ers. First off, they pulled off a great trade with the Bears. Uh, Dropped back one slot and still get their guy in round one with their first pick in round one, Solomon Thomas, the defensive end of Stanford. He's going to be able to play both inside and outside. They trade back into the first round, get Reuben Foster, who falls almost out of the first round because of shoulder issues. Um, I think that's a great pickup for them and really low risk at the end of the first round to pick up that guy. High reward. Two round three picks. Akella Witherspoon, the cornerback out of Colorado. And C.J. Beathard, the quarterback out of Iowa. Uh, adding some more depth to that quarterback battle that will take place there this season for the 49ers, and we'll see what happens as they move forward. Round four, they got Joe Williams, a running back out of Utah. Solid player, probably will see the field for them this year. Round five, they get a tight end out of Iowa and George Kittle. This is a guy a lot of people liked. Um, He's more of a fullback size tight end, you know, that H-back type. He's not really an inline tight end. He doesn't really have the size for that. He'll do that. He's a tight end from Iowa, but that's not really what you want to use him as in the NFL. Uh, wide receiver in round five, Trent Taylor out of Louisiana Tech. Two round six picks, DJ Jones, defensive tackle Mississippi, and Pita Tomopenu, the defensive end out of Utah. 
And in round seven, Adrian Colbert, defensive back out of Miami. A lot of picks. 49ers have a lot of leads, so needs. So you're going to see these guys be depth. You're going to see these guys be on the practice squad. And you're going to see some of these guys get some play. Overall, because of the first half of their draft, all the way through round five, really, early round five, I give the 49ers a B-plus on their draft. Uh, really made some solid picks and made some picks of guys that could develop later on in their career for sure. Moving on to the Seahawks, they had a lot of picks, um, but you don't really see any starters coming out of their draft, or at least I don't. I think they got guys that are only going to be backups or um, rotational guys. Tedrick Thompson, he, he he might be groomed into his starting safety when one of those two Legion of Boom guys leaves and they picked him up in round four, the safety out of Colorado. But really, you go through their list, round two, Malik McDowell, defensive end, Michigan State. Not an NFL starter in my mind. I know he had a lot of hype coming in, um, but he's a rotational backup guy to me. Uh, plays the weak side to me. Uh, Ethan Pokick, center out of, out of LSU. Most likely going to play guard for him. Shaquille Griffin, defensive back out of Central Florida. Okay, there's another project. Delano Hill, safety out of Michigan. M- might be a project. I don't know why they would have taken him before uh, Tedrick Thompson. Personally, I would have taken Tedrick Thompson over Delano Hill, but they got both of them in rounds three and four. Nazir Jones, defensive tackle out of UNC. UNC defensive tackles. What are they really doing in the NFL? Rotational backup guys. Amari Darbo, wide receiver out of Michigan. Inconsistent at Michigan. Some people say, well, okay, he had an inconsistent passing game. He'll be a better pro. Well, that's a lot of what the Seahawks do with their receiving core, so we'll have to see about that one. Round six, Mike Tyson, the safety out of Cincinnati. Project, special teams guy. Justin Sr., tackle out of Mississippi State. They need offensive linemen, but he's a project. That's why he's in round six. Round seven, David Moore, wide receiver out of East Central in Oklahoma. Okay, another type of receiver that maybe Seattle can use. And then Christopher Carson running back out of Oklahoma State in the seventh round. Another one in the stable probably doesn't make the squad. You might see him on the practice team. Um I give the Seahawks a C or a C minus. I'm really not impressed with their draft. I don't think they did a lot to help their offensive line that was so weak. And they didn't get anybody who really, I don't think, can develop into a true starter in the next two or three seasons. They're going to have to wait to get their chance due to injury or somebody leaving the team, and they've been groomed and were able to step in finally. Moving on to the L.A. Rams. Round two, they finally had their first pick. They picked Gerald Everett, the tight end, out of the University of Southern Alabama. There was better tight ends on the board. I know they fell in love with this guy. I know they really like his athleticism. They want to compare him to Jordan Reed, who uh, Kavanaugh had in Washington. Um, There's a reason he went to the University of Southern Alabama. There's a reason. I mean, sometimes you fall in love with guys and you just get it wrong. Their first round three pick, Cooper Cup, wide receiver out of Eastern Washington. I really like this guy. I really do. Um, had he gone to a bigger name school, he probably would have, would have been a round one or two pick. Um, probably the best pick the Rams made, honestly, in my opinion. Then round three, they get John Johnson's the safety out of Boston College. He could be a nice little player for him. We'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, Justin Simmons had a nice season for the Broncos last year. Round four, they have two picks. They get Josh Reynolds, a wide receiver out of Texas A&M, and Samson Ubukam, the linebacker out of Eastern Washington. I like the second one of those better, the linebacker. Uh, He's a hustle-oriented guy, Ubukam is, and I think he'll fit right in with the Wade Phillips system that they'll be running there this year. Round six, Tenzel Smart, defensive tackle out of Tulane, rotational player. Round six, Sam Rogers, fullback out of Virginia Tech. We'll see how they use him. He might be more of an H-back type guy or just a special teams contributor. And then they round out their draft in round seven with Ewan Price, the defensive end out of Pitt, who, again, you throw him into 
Wade Phillips system, and I think that's a nice pick right there. I give them a C, C plus on the draft. Rounding out the NFC show, the last team we have to talk about, the Arizona Cardinals of the NFC West. 